In the late 90s, there was a Japanese duo that would introduce American R&B to Japan. So let's meet the duo and later soloists that would be considered the Japanese queen of R&B, Hirasawa Takako, better known as Double. Now there's a very good reason why Double is considered the Japanese queen of R&B. Now I don't know what you guys were doing in the late 90s, but I was living in Japan during my youthful years and I was listening to bangers such as this. And this one as well. So to be pretty much the first one to popularize the R&B genre, which back then in Japan was a very small niche, is quite big. It's really amazing. And it's fitting of Double's R&B queen status. But to understand Hirasawa Takako's R&B crown, first you gotta understand how she got there. So let's go back to her origins, shall we? Now in the two videos I just showed you, you might have noticed that there's two people. And that's because Double was originally a duo group. It consisted of two sisters, Hirasawa Takako and Hirasawa Sachiko. The Hirasawa sisters would first be introduced to American-styled R&B when their older sister came back from the US in 1992. And her sister brought back souvenirs, namely American R&B CDs. And both Takako and Sachiko at the time would not know it, but these CDs would form the basis of their career. They were both blown away when they saw Mary J. Blige's Real Love. Other big R&B 90s acts at the time, such as Janet Jackson and TLC, would get the Hirasawa sisters hooked on the genre. The music videos, the soulful sounds, and the addictive slow beats would addict both the Kako and Sachiko. They knew they both wanted to sing in R&B, and they both believed they can express themselves musically in the genre. They would try their hand to become rhythm and blues singers, but there was only one problem. They felt they would have a hard time connecting Japanese audiences with the American feel and soul of R&B. They weren't sure whether Japanese audiences would resonate with this niche genre. Also, the sisters never had any exposure living in the US and seeing the R&B genre play out in America. So the sisters were pretty disadvantaged at the start. They were really just racking their heads. How can we make this work? How can we make this American to Japanese connection of the R&B genre work? Since R&B is deeply rooted in both the US culture and the African American culture. So it was gonna be a tough obstacle for sure. And as the Kako mentioned in a 2008 interview with the Japan Times later, she would say that R&B is originally in English, so it was easier in English, but I really wanted to try and develop a way to express R&B in Japanese that would be really good. Another big problem is during the 90s in Japan, R&B was a very small niche. Like you had J-pop, you had J-rock, and the rising Shibuya K during the 90s. But R&B was just a blip on the radar. So the question stands, would Japanese audiences groove to the R&B sounds that the Hirasawa sisters were already doing? Well, we're about to find out, as they were undeterred by all the obstacles that stood in front of them. They wanted to make American-style R&B popular in Japan no matter what. So to do this, the sisters would try to immerse themselves in the American culture and R&B scene as quickly as possible. Thus, they would move from their hometown of Nigata all the way down to Tokyo. But once in Tokyo, they wouldn't sign with a big label right away. Rather, they would cut their teeth and do concerts at Yokota Air Base in Tokyo. And they would perform for the American service men and women that already knew the best R&B hits back home. A couple years later in 1998, they would get their first big break signed with a music label. And in 1998, they would officially debut with their first single, For Me. A year later in 1999, they would have their debut album, Crystal. Crystal would be quite a revelation as it would peak number two on the Oricon, showing that Japanese audiences can, yes, resonate to American styled R&B if done right. So all seemed good with the dub super sisters of Japanese R&B. Until that is, tragedy struck. Sachiko would suddenly die from a blood disease, devastating her sister Takako and putting the group on hiatus. One half of Double was instantly missing. Understandably, the Kako would go on hiatus, taking a break from the music industry for one year. A year later, she would come back as a soloist, with her stage name being the same, Double. 
as a memory for her sister. In fact, one of her comeback songs would be Angel, which would be all about her sister. And then during the early 2000s, she would be on fire and she would release one of my favorite songs called Driving All Night. During this time, Double kept her songs in Japanese but had the American flavor in it. She would also start to dress more sexy and sultry, and she would get this from a singer she greatly admired, Madonna. Double's R&B success in the 90s and 2000s would further spur on other R&B singers in the Japanese industry such as Crystal K, a newly styled Nami Emuro, Heartstales, Emi Tawada, and others. Double would also credit duo M-Flow for being the Japanese Neptunes of pushing American styled R&B. Double would say that Mflo encouraged her to keep doing R&B and to keep having that style. And to no one's surprise, they would be collaborating on one of their love series as Double would sing a jazz track. From 2000 to 2008, Double would be at the peak of her career. She would collaborate with DJ Kaori and the famed Namie Amuro. Her music videos would also scale in production costs and quality as well, such as 2005's Rock the Party and 2007's Spring Love. And then for that collaboration with Namie Amuro, Black Diamond, she would have eight dancers and 40 extras. A far cry when she first debuted with her sister Sachiko in 1998 with a minimal budget and just the two of them on camera. During this time, Double was highly respected by the media. She would shun the spotlight and refuse most interviews, only doing the interviews that were mandatory. As she said in a 2008 Japan Times interview, she said that she was more of an editing type of person, more of a backstage type of person. Because of that, she doesn't really like performing live, instead just releasing studio music and music videos. So now we're fast forwarding to 2008, her 10 year anniversary, in the Japanese music industry. Her 10 year anniversary has all of the bangers that she's done from her debut with her sister Sachiko in 1998 all the way up to 2008. And just listening to that CD is just a testament of how far Double has come and how she's influenced Japanese R&B to this day. And to Takako, their 10 year anniversary would mark a major milestone in her career. Since 2008, she would release one more album in 2011, a collaboration with 2PM's Junsu. But after a woman, she would be largely hidden from the spotlight. Once again, shutting the entertainment limelight. But the double, she would have it no other way. As of 2019, it's been 21 years since her debut. And while there's not much news about Double these days, I personally think that if Double was still around, she'd still have it. She'd still have her R&B chops and she can show the younger R&B generation of Japan how it's done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'd love to know your take on it. And if you guys like what we do here at Pop Story in-depth K-pop and now J-pop videos, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below. And if you guys want real talk on K-pop and K-pop journalism, then please sign up for my free email list below and grab the free ebook. And with that being said, I'm off to watch, well in this case, some more J-pop videos, but I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy guys.